enclosed garages, two car for lot eight, and three cars for lot seven and nine. Vehicular access would be via 16 foot wide driveway. In their comments, the Department of Building and Safety Zoning states that a minimum 20 foot access strip be provided to carnage and or vehicular access purposes for all the lots all the way to the public street. The applicant is requested to either revise the map or obtain approval from the planning department to reduce access strip. Building and Safety is also requesting the applicant to obtain approval from the advisory agency for the projection of parking spaces and trash enclosures into the required parts of the office setbacks. Reports received were from the Bureau of Engineering. This report said the track map layout is satisfactorily submitted and recommends approval subject to conditions. The Department of Building and Safety Zoning Division, the Department of Transportation, the Fire Department, Los Angeles Unified School District, the Bureau of Street Lighting, and the Bureau of Sanitation. The conditions have been incorporated to the staff report. The project was issued mitigated negative declaration EMV 2014 7 on May 19, 2014. Two letters and a phone call were received in opposition to the project. The comments express opposition to the demolition of the 1921 Craftsman Bungalow, increase in noise, traffic, height of the buildings, parking, and location of trash pickup. Staff did receive a phone call this morning from a member of the Land Use Committee of the Neighborhood Council, uh, which they stated that the Land Use Committee is in opposition to the proposed project pending full approval of the Neighborhood Council. Planning staff was also informed after the writing of the staff report of a City Council motion to initiate proceedings to establish the Berkshire Craftsman Revival Bungalow District Historic Preservation Overlay Zone and have the Planning Department work with CD14 to establish a geographic, geographical boundaries. Also to prepare an interim control ordinance to prohibit the issuance of demolition building grading permits within the proposed historic district. In light of the foregoing, Planning Department staff recommends that the case be taken under advisement. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now, there was an amendment to the staff report. Instead, uh, we recommend approval originally. And now the recommendation is to uh, put the case under advisement. And the, I believe it's more than anything historic preservation issues. But we will have a conversation on that. Who is the applicant? The applicant, right? Okay, who is going to speak on this? Well, I'm the Okay. So, for what say your name and address for the record? Yes. Good morning. My name is Ayla Blau. My address is 1026 Melania Lima, South Pasadena. And uh, I'm the architect and also the uh, owner of this property. So, basically, what I um, when I, you know, I've done a lot of uh, apartments and condos uh, in the Los Angeles uh, in the last 30 years. So, and um, when I read about this uh, small lot uh, and the merits of it, you know, I really wanted to, to uh, join the movement. So instead of uh, doing an apartment building, which you know, with the uh, density bonus and so on, I could go up to 11 to 13 unit. So I decided to do a nine-unit uh, small lot, and and also decided to instead of doing like a long row of, of, of buildings, so nine buildings in one single row, I decided to put them in three different buildings, uh, which is a form that is uh, not foreign to the neighborhood. Is uh, this plot is basically made up of uh, mostly apartments, bungalow, uh, court, and uh, some single family and some. Uh, commercial building. So, like for instance, you can see uh, this is a picture of some of the apartments on the on the block. And this one has about, some of them has about the same massing and height and also in terms of the uh, uh, similar to what I'm proposing, similar to what I'm proposing here. And also with this, uh, 
the view and from the windows instead of looking into the neighbor's yard, uh, like uh, uh, one single row of, of row house would be. This one would be like looking into the courtyard of the street. Question, when do you apply for this? What is that? When do you apply for this? Uh, this one was, uh, the application was formally submitted uh, on January 1st. Uh, second, I'm sorry. Second, January 2nd. This is before the uh, Monday to go to the design guidelines, okay? Yes. You still need to comply with some requirements. But oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I study those, uh, and I've still visited a lot of those uh, small projects. So. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, anything else? Because we may come back to answer some of the issues. Sure, yeah. Uh, very slightly, you know, whoever wants to bring them up. Thank you. Who wants to speak on this uh, from the first round? Let's come forward. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Moktisum Esparza. I live at 5618 Berkshire Drive. And my property immediately abuts the subject property, backyard to backyard. Uh, the community has been organizing to create a historical overlay for several years and recently received the support of the city councilman for that purpose. And consultants have been hired uh, to do a survey throughout the community to determine which homes are contributing, which homes are historic. My personal home has been designated as one of three within the three block area that merits uh, national historic standing and was one of the key homes that was cited in the 710 freeway uh, studies as uh, being significant to the city community. The home that is the subject of this request is a historic home and is identified as a contributing home in studies that were done by the 710 freeway architects. Do you have, uh, when you say studies, I understand that there was a designation, although I haven't seen the, the clear evidence, did by Caltrans? That's uh, right. And, but I, do you know what document uh, we're talking about? Because I don't we're talking have about copy. actual designation. Yeah, I, I don't have a copy with me. Okay. This property was designated as con contributory to the historic area. Mm -hmm. Perhaps one of my neighbors may have that document. But there's a sort of map prepared by the Caltrans or probably that's something we need. Yes, sir. Um, so, well, based also on all of this and the fact that the city councilman, when he learned of this project, did present a motion to freeze any demolition permits until a proper study can be conducted. So that process is just undergoing. Now, in reference to the compliance with this process. Uh, I only learned about this project accidentally, literally one day before the local community public hearing at the neighborhood council. And had I not read a particular stray email, none of my neighbors would have known because I'm the one who walked around and told my neighbors about it. So there was no appropriate outreach. Um, and uh, uh, the developer did come and speak to my wife the day before and represented that the neighborhood had no say and that he was merely as a courtesy telling people that he was going to do this uh, and did not notify people or give notice of the fact that the public hearing was about to occur. So there was certainly deficiency and lack of compliance or good faith with the notice requirements of letting everyone know within 500 feet of the subject property. We vehemently object to the notion of tearing down this beautiful crossing home. And if it were to be torn down, uh, we vehemently object to the 35 feet height, which would tower over all the neighbors. Uh, there is no building that approaches 35 feet. Uh, and this would tower over my backyard, which I would definitely pose in court uh, and with other resources that I might have. All right. Thank you very much. You are joined the property to what side of the? Backyard, backyard, backyard. To the, the, the back. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else from the first round? Can you come forward? Please say your name and address for the record. Dr. Tom Williams, uh, 4117 Barrett Road, LA 90032. 
uh, past member of the LA32 Neighborhood Council Board, also a member of the Sierra Club Transportation Committee. Uh, we're quite concerned about this project because it's just one lot, you know, but it's a problem. This is the first lot of three stories within the city of LA along Huntington Drive from South Pasadena going in. It's the first, would be the first one. It's also immediately within the intersection of Main and Huntington Drive. And it only has a single point of access. I am not against small lot subdivisions as long as they have direct access to a street. We've seen other ones being proposed where it had <coughs> one in, one out. But there's this fundamental problem. Who's going to be in charge of this? We don't know. Okay, the concern you have is access and safety. Safety, okay. presence, the aesthetics, the fact that it's the first, would be the first recent building <coughs> in the LA corridor as front piece for LA to the rest of San Diego Valley. There's also a matter that we reviewed the environmental considerations, the mitigated negative declaration is a complete and adequate example. Cultural resources. The only cultural resources that are discussed are archaeological. There's no historic <coughs> presentation. There's no discussion regarding the historic mitigation that could be done, photography, plants, and stuff like that. There's also for the public works as to who's going to be in charge of the water pipes, sewers, storm drains. It's not compliant with LID and several other. Okay, uh, just conclude uh, your your comments. Okay. I'm used to watching the talk. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not really taking time strictly, but I, you know, I'm going to the third time because, uh, because to, to, be fair, to be fair to the staff, staff consulted with some people in historical resources. They said there was no issue. Then there was an in-depth, you know, inquiry, yeah. and there are issues. So that's, <laughs> that's uh, what I thought, but I understand what, you know, some of the what, one of the things that people don't realize is the height of these buildings might say adjacent to the property lines on at least two sides affects historic buildings. The lot to the west of this particular lot is also a similar craftsman. There's also a matter that this is about three to four feet above the road level of Huntington Drive but it's about 10 to 12 feet above the road level of Berkshire Drive on the back side. So it will very have a very large mass dominance of the view line from the right. Berkshire. Thank you very much. I will leave it there. So anybody else from who wants to testify? The second row, third row? Can you come forward, please? First, here's a map of the proposed HPOZ for the Caltrans. I've uh, labeled with the address the uh, property question. Uh, my name is Francisco Rivera. I live at 5633 Huntington Drive, North, Los Angeles, 90032. I live in the property just west to the proposed uh, site. We share the uh, entire uh, side. We're missing the next one. Uh, I'll keep my statements brief because uh, the four feet is long and I actually wrote them out, so I'll leave them here as well. Um, I'll try to make it as brief as possible. Um, there's uh, many, many issues that can be mentioned for being a single space. I'm concerned about the degradation of the historical corner of Los Angeles, uh, the, the review of, uh, Joey reviewed CSR points his motion regarding the Berkshire Craftsman Revival Bungalow District HBOC. And uh, from what I understand, um, it has moved to a pump committee as of uh, recess last week. Um, I'm concerned about the traffic impact at the intersection of Nathan Drive and Main Street. Uh, Mr. Lau proposes that the driveway should service 20 spaces that open directly into a highly trafficked uh, intersection. And anybody who goes down that corridor would know that this T intersection would be very challenging to have a driveway going right into a uh, sawbuck. Could you provide that as uh, part of the evidence? Yes, I'm happy to. Um, so, we are going to talk about uh, 
heard of right there in the picture, you can also see the bus stop which services line 77 and uh, line 78 and 378, which come from Alhambra, take very wide left turns, have to, to be able to make a left turn from Main Street Alhambra onto Huntington Drive. It would basically block any and all access to that driveway as cars are coming in and I'm concerned about the damage to protected trees. Uh, Mr. Lau and those he has worked with have either not looked carefully or chosen to ignore three California live oaks that will be affected by this. Uh, there is one at the border of our properties, literally within two feet of the border, and I have some pictures of it. This is a California live oak, Marcus Agricolia. Um, there's one in the backyard as well. And grading and damage to the water table uh, for these two trees, which are on my property line, would be damaged by any construction which would require a digging to create these three-story uh, uh, buildings. Further, uh, over his over my fence, I can see he has a live oak as well on his side of the fence, which is not uh, mentioned at all in his uh, declaration. Uh, I'm concerned about the well, uh, harmful elements that we released. Um, I, as a, I, I live in the 102-year-old craftsman next door, um, and I had to replace my heating system. But the two that could be replaced, we have to significant asbestos abatement. A lot of the asbestos that is still on our walls, because the model does not touch the spine, but as soon as we start tearing down that house, asbestos will be in the environment as well as any lead. This is an old home, plus any other uh, negative things in the environment. Concerned about the lack of parking, 20 units, uh, 20 parking spaces for the units can be seen like enough, but they're already impacted in parking. Many of our neighbors and ourselves have to often walk two to three blocks to park our cars, we're not allowed to park across the street, which is Hamburg, which is currently the parking. Concerned about the increase in problems regarding trash, he proposes curbside trash for nine units, a minimum of three bins, including recycle, green, and, and trash, which would be 27 extra bins in a frontage of only a single lot. And while the lot is very deep and there's a lot of square footage, there's not in a frontage of 27 uh, uh, trash cans there. I can't see how that's possible. Um, also concerned about the, uh, the question about the 1,500 square foot department per lot. From what I understand in the summary of RV1.5, uh, each minimum area for each one that a dwelling unit should be 1,500 square feet, and five of the nine units do not comply with that. I might be mistaken on how that's right. You are mistaken there, but that's. Uh, this is my reading, I'm not, <laughs> but I want to bring it up. Concerned about the lack of an HOA, which was discussed previously, that common areas, the common areas like sewage and uh, water would not be covered uh, Mr. Lover in last Thursday's meeting. Uh, proposing he was not planning on having an HOA to make it easier to sell his properties. However, uh, that is uh, going to be an issue for the neighborhoods. Uh, worried about flurry, privacy, we've discussed across the view. I have a view of the St. Gabriel Mountains from my home and from Mount Baldy to, uh, to Mount Wilson from my office, and that would be entirely erased by a three story structure in the way. And finally, um, uh, Mr. Lyles, who's not acted so far in good faith, we, I first learned about this development on the 28th of June, on the 27th of June, he had arranged uh, an appointment with the uh, Neighborhood Council, the LA 32 Neighborhood Council, the Land Use and Development Committee. Uh, and on the 28th of the next day, uh, the meeting was to be Monday. On Saturday, he went by and so, sold some of the neighbors. I even spoke to him for about 15 minutes, and he not once mentioned that within 48 hours there would be a neighborhood meeting regarding the subject. And if it wasn't for Mr. Esparza and, and uh, his intimate connections in the uh, neighborhood, we would have never known the immediacy of the meeting. Uh, so I try to go as quickly as possible and uh, get more points in my letter. If, uh, okay, that's, that's enough. We we'll, we'll have your, your letter. Uh, thank you very much. Someone else uh, wants to go with testimony? Okay. Um, our desired characteristic under the city's northeast plan. 
and so certifying the lot would go against the Northeast plan. And building a three level. Say that again. Three level the Northeast plan. Um, okay. To certify this lot would be going against a Northeast plan since um, part of the culture trade is to keep the single family dwellings and this proposed project will not go against it. Okay. Um, building a three level structure in this part of Exodeno is definitely out of character with the surrounding community. There is no three level structure in the proximity of the proposed project site. I think that's the most disturbing um, part of this proposal, having a three level structure. Okay. And we ask that you consider all these reasons and to reject the applicant's request, especially since this project plans to demolish a historic home. Um, in addition to the concerns that the Ocedano Historical Society has, we concur with the concerns of parking and privacy that the immediate neighbors have. I thank you for listening, and um, we hope that this application is, is divided in the best interest of our community. All right. Uh, you want to provide that? That's probably your... Um, these are just my notes. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. Anybody else uh, wants to give testimony? Okay. So let's... Uh, Anybody else? Okay. Come forward. Say your name and ask the question. Hi, everyone, sir. Uh, my name is Lou Hernandez. I'm the property owner of the property adjacent to the uh, uh, property. Right. Okay. Um, the property is 43 and 5645. Uh, uh, so we, my family has owned the, the property for about 40 years now. I haven't been living there 10 years before that. Uh, our main concern is the the during construction and as well as after the construction as we do during construction and we're worried about the erosion to the property of the digging and, um, and the demolition of the of the house in question. Um, also the pollution, all the debris that would be entering my properties uh, inside our own property. Uh, we have a few windows with the circle windows that face the property. Uh, noise level issues. Uh, uh, to breathe, my tenants only have window there, no central heating and air, and so their windows is their way to cool off our Good um, traffic, extra foot traffic, and again, the intersection, how, um, I don't know how that intersection is going to be uh, treated there since my entrance is right before the light. I imagine that if this intersection continues to be a block, it's going to jam up the entire. Uh, area of traffic. All right, thank you very much. Yes, Anybody else uh, wants to give testimony? Okay, then we have the uh, applicant in the back. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. This time here, uh, there are some issues. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, the first issue I wanted to discuss was the uh, so, um, yeah, at first, uh, the neighborhood uh, council was in support of this, and then uh, somehow this map turned out. Uh, it was the same map that we had. So, uh, and I'm looking through the history of this and where it came from and so on. So, I was able to contact the uh, uh, Carol Shell, who is the uh, keeper of the National Register of Historic Places in Washington, D.C. So she sent me an email, uh, stated that this is not, uh, this is, this uh, part of the area is uh, considered eligible, but then it's not in the uh, officially listed. And also the document that she sent me, uh, I would like to point out the differences. Um, first of all, uh, in the, uh, the document that made this area eligible, the Huntington Drive portion has been excluded. And uh, in the document, there's an explanation I can submit the information to you yeah, about. Uh, so, because this was a, the first prelim prelim preliminary um, uh, study. That, that was done by Caltrans? Well, no, it was a subcontractor who it was a historian who drove around like in a 64 mile uh, area. And the, and the second map that you're showing is? Oh, that was from the. Uh, eligibility from, from uh, National uh, uh, his, uh, Register of Historic Places. So so they took, this map is in there too. So there's a, 
uh, explanation from how they got from this point to this point, how some of the areas are. Uh, that the agency that, that, that produced the second one, what was the agency? So this is the, the, the other one. That one. Yeah. But now that was not within the city. No, okay. no. Washington DC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And also, this is not. Uh, well, basically, in Washington DC, what they do is they they look at, they review, and see if the, the case has merit. So basically, and then they did. I uh, see the numbers here. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an inventory of all the homes here, and and you also can tell, even though the colors are reversed, that some of the buildings that were originally on this list. We're not. We're no longer after they did uh, further studies on it. So there is uh, quite a few uh, differences between these two maps. Yes, but the, the, just just comment. The, right. We are in a charter city. Right. And if also, we have to a charter city. The I understand the national register may have to use that, but the last word in this case will be up to the city of Los Angeles. Right. This so and I also check with uh, the uh, uh, Michelle. Maybe who was the uh, head of the Office of Historic Preservation when personally to the office, and she confirmed that this is not part of the SPOZ. Uh, so it doesn't show up in any city search, uh, New York search, or any other thing. So, uh, but I understand there's a proposal underway, so I'm sure that is done. Uh, that, uh, you know, if you need further information, I'll be happy to provide and to be, to be uh, you know, fair to you also to the developer in this case, we consulted with the city attorney. The city, uh, on, on the fact that there is a motion out there to establish a uh, potential HPOC to, to do a survey, uh, the motion itself doesn't have merit to stop it. However, the environmental component does. So we, uh, there is something missing here because the environmental assessment didn't really address the potential impacts on historic resources. So that's somehow a setback that we need to reassess the project. And uh, just to let you know that, but you can continue, if you can be brief because yeah. we're not going to make a decision today. Right. So the other uh, thing was the trash pickup. I don't have trash uh, enclosures inside the a lot, but for some reason, uh, the report says, uh, uh, you know, it would be curbside pickup, and, and that's not my intention. What is going to be? I have two trash enclosures. It's going to be a centralized? Yeah, so sometimes the, the, they would drive a little truck to pick up. The is there, uh, was there a location indicated in yes. the map on where the trash Yeah, is near the side yard on both okay. sides. Okay. Yeah. So um, that means you have to have a homeowner association to take care of that, correct? Uh, but the, the way the way I uh, there's another project with the same issue and what I require from the homeowner the, or the developer in this case is to have a, a legal binding agreement with the company or with the sanitation department uh -huh. to have them to have the trash uh, and not to have all these individual goods on the street right. but that would be a condition of approval in case the is approved. Um, uh, what other issues uh, came up? Uh, did you have a uh, did you have a letter from the neighborhood council? Did you meet the neighborhood council? Well, oh, yes, I did. I met with them twice. So the first time they approved the project, they didn't, but they not approved it. Yeah. And then the second time, uh, overwhelmingly rejected it because of all that. The issue is already good, preservation issues. Um, now, the, is there a letter from the Federal Council? Uh, or what no, else? I think they, they, their meeting is coming up. Uh, but there's, in, in there's, August, not, there's yeah. no final recommendation, in other words. Well, they, they have not come to the point where they have been. Okay. Here, so. Now, the notification to the neighbors, I understand, was this done by BTC? BTC. So, uh, just to let the public know, because I know there were some issues about that, there is a company that uh, does the notification by mail and by posting and that and because the notification is a legal requirement there are there is evidence that the notification was provided. What the community can do is to consult the 
the file and see if their names are listed or if they're not listed in the mailing uh, list. So then there will be grounds. But all the notices were sent out as required by law in this case. Um, May I also explain the, because I've been trying to get the new counsel to hear this case for a long time. So because of, they were under uh, they call exhausted measures, so they were not able to have meeting. And actually, they were telling me that uh, there would be a meeting coming up in two weeks, and then when the time comes, it didn't happen. So I really didn't have so much too much time. I have to contact the neighbors on the weekend. You know, I cannot. Okay. I don't think it was a good idea. So there's only so so many weekends between the meetings. So. Okay, but, but I mean, you're, you're saying that there has been a good take effort on your side yes. to reach out. The, the community. Uh, now, uh, is there any uh, tricks on site? Well, we cannot see yet. Is there any uh, well, protected tricks? I was just curious. I didn't know about that. You know, on site. Yeah, I didn't. You don't think there's no trees? I, I walked the site. I really, I'm not sure where it comes from. Yeah. Maybe it's, uh, yeah, I don't want to. We can look. Well, so I mean, my staff report indicates that a tree report was submitted. Oh, okay. okay. That there were no protected trees on the side. There were no protected trees, okay. Yeah. Um, well, there was uh, some written comments about the existence. So we're going to look into that. We have uh, uh, aerial maps that date uh, five, ten years ago. And it's, it, it, a tree was removed. We need to revisit that issue, uh, you know, for compliance purposes. Um, as I said, uh, there, there was new information coming uh, regarding potential impact to historic resources, so we are going to revisit. We're talking to the historic resource section of the department. We're going to uh, review this uh, map. So you can provide the map that you yeah. and. Uh, Actually, we're going to share it with the historic resource staff sure. and uh, look into that. As far as the motion that was put up by council, again, we consulted with the city attorney. It doesn't have teeth at this point. The, uh, the environmental element has teeth. We can it's basically it's discretionary to whatever work we do with the historic resource people and see what, uh, what are the facts. What, are, what is the evidence of what, are the, what is the potential impacts? If there is any potential impacts, you know, we, we, will, we will have remedies. Some of that remedies may be to ask you to comply with some architectural character issues in the community, uh, in particular to the style of this neighborhood. Um, I need to think of something else depending on what the, the evidence is from the, uh, you know, from the research that probably we will have to do. Uh, so I'm aware of this site. I, I was the planner for Northeast for a few years, and I was aware of you know, this neighborhood. And so I'm, not, I'm somehow familiar with the neighborhood. And the fact that they, it has potential historic significance. But it hasn't been decided yet. All right? So I'm going to take this under advisement. We're going to further risk the consult with the historic resource people. Do we have any problems? Here is the it doesn't have any requirements. If there is street widening, then there is one line that needs to be relocated. I don't know if the other thing in there is going to have a widening. There is no Yeah, the, something else I want. I want to look into the issue of parking. Uh, even though you mentioned that you can build a park. I mean, you can, oh, yes. you can go ahead and do whatever you know. You have right property rights, but you are subject to environmental review because of this issue. So, uh, one common uh, argument that uh, developers come in and say, oh, I can develop convenience, I can develop apartments, okay. but there is a reason why you do that. Yes, do it eventually. Right. So, uh, we're going to look into that and now because this has been brought up to us. Whether you want to develop apartments or not, there, you know, there is an environmental issue that uh, we need to look at. So we're going to take this under advisement. We're going to talk to the historic resource people in our department. 
And if there is a need to reissue an MMV, we will reissue the MMV. If there is uh, some additional mitigation measures, that will be included in the decision. But we're, we're not going to have any other public hearings at this point. So the staff is, I mean, the public is going to be uh, provided with the decision. As long as you write your name and address in this speak sheet, and whatever decision comes up, you'll have the opportunity to appeal. Okay, there's an appeal process. So this is a very advisory and the public uh, can also contact Joey via email on what is the status of the uh, of this uh, for the research on the Thank you. Thank you very much.